Okay. Does anybody have a sass in this room by any chance? Over here. Go. Are you two together by the way? Or? Yeah. Perfect. Microphone, K Kieran over here. So how long have you, have you had a sass for? Uh, so the money transfers from PT earlier this year. And what does SAS stand for for the benefit of the room? S small self. Administered? Scheme. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, if you've got any pensions hanging around that are, well, that could be a certain type of pension, they don't fund them to. Yeah. You can transfer the funds into the SAS that's yep. attached and sponsored by a limited company. Yes. Um, and then you can use the money to invest, although there are governing bits to go with it, but you can use portions of it for okay. development, stuff like that. So a SAS is a benefit for pension purposes. You have different types of pensions. Uh, you can have a SIP, SAS or other arrangement. A SAS gives you more flexibility, but for the benefit of everybody in the room here, I am not allowed to give you investment advice. So I'm just sharing with you how a SAS works. This is not advice or how you should do things. Just like our friend over here is doing. Uh, so, so the massive plus is the money you get a pension, you disappear okay. when you died or passed on, but it basically becomes a legacy that you can pass on to your dependents. Yep, and basically a SAS is what we, it's a trust. Yep, that's how it's formed. It's a trust, and you have a bank account, and like our friend over here said, let's say you've been working somewhere, let's say you've been working for British Telecom for the last 15 years, and you've got a pension with them, uh, which is worth 300,000 pounds, you could, as long as it's possible, move that into your SAS. Okay? So you've got your SAS up here. Now with 400 grand. And as our friend over here said, you've, you've got to have a sponsoring company, okay, which is usually a company which generates profit. Every year, you can transfer up to 40,000 pounds into your SAS, Carmen, as long as you make the profit. Okay? If you, if you were part of a pension plan in the previous three years and you haven't made those contributions, you carry forward the last three years. Yeah, that means you could, you could make a payment of £120,000 in any given one year. So if you go back to Bernadette's example that I shared over here, somewhere here, If Bernadette, where's it gone? It was somewhere anyway, somewhere here. If Bernadette's made a hundred, I think it's on the last sheet. If Bernadette's made a hundred thousand pound profit, she's going to use up her capital allowances. Remember, at eighteen percent. What she could do is first make the pension contributions and bring her profit down significantly. So let's say in the first year Bernadette makes a hundred grand profit and then says, I've started up my SAS. my SAS. Last three years, I was part of a pension plan, but I haven't made the contributions. I'll make the contributions this year. Unfortunately, Bernadette can't make 120,000 pounds because she's only made 100 grand profit, but she could make a 100,000 pound contribution into a pension pot, okay? Which means she gets tax relief and makes no profit in that year. Everybody with me so far or no? So in simple terms, Carmen, a SAS, or pension contributions enable you to move money from your limited company, for example, into your SAS, so this becomes 440. When the money goes in here, no tax to pay by the SAS. When, when your company makes a contribution, they get tax relief at 19% or whatever the tax rate may be. Yep. Yeah. Can, you, can you transfer a SAP to a SAS? Yes, but you go speak to an IFA, make sure it's worthwhile and it's gonna give you uh, a, a, a bigger benefit. Are the bar downs different for pensions when you do retire? No. No, so you can still get the same draw downs. Same draw down. So. 55 at the minute, which is increasing to 57, 25% lump sum tax free. Yeah. Okay, which is there. And then depending on how much you need every single year, you draw down and you may pay tax depending on how much income you have. Turning it to a SAS sounds more beneficial than having a SAS. It does, because I'm going to cover that for you in a second how you can do that. Uh, Jordan, and then we'll go, go back to Carmen's example. And then it's fine. Um, and no, you're next. I was just going to say, um, so you've moved your money into this 
you can't use that as a business expense as in the sense of I need to, uh, you know, monitor any costs in a hotel using that. You can't use it as that. But Not here, you no. Use it for renovating purposes on a property, can't you? I'm going to cover that for you in a second. All right. The 40k limit, is that into individual pensions? Per person, yeah. So Up to if I've got so, if, so at the minute I'm employed, so I pay into my pension through my work. So would that be part of the forty? That's right. Yeah, you, you so want as a whole. So if, yeah, so if you pay twenty thousand pounds through your employment, you've got twenty grand left. Right. Yeah. Okay. That yep. also includes some inflation and growth in your pension pot too. Oh, does it? Okay. Not for the limit though. For. For, for your, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 but, but if you're, if you didn't have an, oh yeah, yeah, I get that, yeah, so, if it's growing like that, yeah, you're, you're right, it is, yeah. And yeah, well, so you're linked with that, so I'll come to the second burn then. Here, you have a lifetime limit, and I think from memory, it's one million and eighty thousand pounds, or thereabouts. Okay, so you will be mindful as you're growing this, you don't breach that particular limit because yeah. then you've got tax consequences uh, depending on how old you are uh, and w when you breach it. So yes, you. Is that person again? Yes. Yes. But it's actually 1.1 1 .1 unless you. Yeah, it goes up every year. Yes. If there's two of you, you have 2.2 .2 in there? Yeah, yes. Yeah. If there's two of you. 3.6 because we applied for it. If there's two of you, okay, let's call it 1.1 million. If there's two of you, you've got 2.2. Okay. But what you can do is, and this is getting complicated, this is not investment advice, but just so we're clear, is you can, you can, if there's two of you, you can make a contribution of 500,000 pounds in one year into your general fund. Okay. okay. You can also write to HMRC, okay, and make a bigger contribution of two million pounds. You just got to jump through a few more hoops. So two or more opens up more possibilities in terms of contributions for you. What's the maximum number of people you can have in a SAS? Who said 10? You're close. 11. 11. So you can have to 11 people. So it could be husband, wife, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, children, or whoever you want. Yes? Yeah. You might not want an employee, but you can. <laughs> Am I right that you can leave your SAS to your children? Yes. Yeah. So the good thing about SAS, so you've got money here, you can loan up to 50% of the value, and this comes to your point, Jordan, 50% to one of your companies, go charge interest and pay back within five years, so you can loan back up to 50%. You can loan the entire funds to another entity, you can own commercial property in this, if you buy commercial property, you can't claim capital allowances. And the reason why you can't claim capital allowances is because the SAS does not pay any tax. So you're using the example over there. We can't write off the capital allowances for tax purposes. Therefore, no capital allowances. Okay. Uh, any rental income you generate, no tax. Uh, if you sell the property, no capital gains tax. You, trans you can have legacy planning and leave the pension to your children. And it's uh, tax efficient for inheritance tax purposes. So there's a lot of reasons why this is good from a tax point of view and also from a financial planning point of view. There's two or more of you and you've got quite a bit of money here. Let's just say 2.2 million, okay, over a number of years, including growth. You might never need a bank ever again because you've got your own money there, which you can use to do commercial conversions. You could buy a commercial property, start the conversion, Okay, and then, and then yeah, you can sell it before it's classified as a residential property. So, so I've got about fifty thousand in two options, and I was told that we should have made seventy five thousand minimum to start the sale. No, you can start with zero. So I started with zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. What the purpose entity is to make the fees viable. Yeah. You get about seventy five thousand pounds because they're going to be selling you some money. Yeah. But as you're doing commercial conversion and other uh, property strategies, hopefully you'll be able to quickly build it up and start paying in, into yeah. it. And who do you recommend? I work with Kevin Whelan from Wealth Builders. Anybody that you recommend? Kevin, there you go. 
Okay? Yeah, thanks. Super. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, by the way, make sure you click like, subscribe and post a comment uh, because that tells me that you're engaging and you're finding the content useful. And if you like this video, make sure you check out this video here because it's the next stage in terms of your learning and development.